By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have some nice old school MTG for you, 93, 94. That is the era of magic, the gathering, we all know it. And today I'm playing against one of my patrons. His name is Nathan, and he's brought an Urnum Burnham deck to the table, and I'm battling his deck with my white and green a sleeping beauty brew and it is a wall deck it's got for during enchantresses it is very very cool does it stand a chance against you know all the fire and violence of urn and burnham i'm not sure maybe it does maybe it doesn't there's only one way to find out and that is checking out this video now if you want to go straight to the action and you want to skip the deck tech because as always i'll start with the deck tech section you can do that by checking the description below there you will find a timestamp that's called MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. And if you stick around here, we are going to start with the deck decks. And I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Nathan, and his Urnum Burnum Brew. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Nathan. And he's playing with an Urnum Burnum deck now. It's nice to know that Nathan hasn't played Old School Magic in a long time. So this is his first game. And you're on the channel straight away, Nathan. So, uh, you know, I, I respect that. I respect your courage. Uh, and he's brought uh, a very traditional and very cool deck to the table, Earn and Burn him. It's, it's a strong deck. It's got two things going for it. It's got strong, efficient creatures and it's got burn. So it's got two ways to deal damage. And I think that combination is what makes this deck so strong. If we look at this list, maybe starting all the way on the right, we see four Urnum Jids, four Curd Apes, and four Lunar Elves. Now, the cool thing here is, of course, uh, Urnum Jin being one green and three to cast for a four five creature. That's just incredible power for that amount of mana. That, that is simply a good deal. Now, the cool thing is you can still get these pretty cheap in Chronicles, right? So it is a nice budget option. Then you also have four Curd Apes. Now, Curd Ape and Taiga, that is really old school for you. That's one of the oldest synergies that, you know, that I've seen playing this game since 1995, right? So Curd Ape comes in, uh, into play for one mountain, but if you also control forest, it gets plus one, plus two. So it's a two, three for one. I mean, that's great value. And if you've got a Taiga into a Curd Ape, you've got a two, three turn one. That's just a cool thing to do. You know that if you, if you make that play, it gives you a good feeling. You know, you feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, I'm understanding this game. Uh, another card not to underestimate is the, the four cards we see at the bottom of this first row, and that is Lunar Elves. Lunar Elves, it is one green for a 1-1 one, one body that you can tap to give you another green. So it can help you win the tempo game. It can help you win the tempo race. And when you have an aggressive deck, you want to win on tempo. So having a Lunar Elves turn one or turn two means that you can get your Urnum Gin out early. And that means you can start smashing face early. And that is extremely important. But apart from that, uh, Lunar Elves also uh, gives you the opportunity to basically deal damage. It's a 1-1 one, one body as well. And if you're looking at this deck, you see a Pendlehaven in this brew. Personally, I think I would have added an extra Pendlehaven, maybe even three Pendlehaven, but I think two Pendlehaven would be quite nice in this brew as well. But we're seeing one here, Nathan's brew. Pendlehaven is a land from Legends. You can tap it and it can give a 1-1 one, one creature plus one, plus two. So that is pretty strong. So what you, the scenario that could happen here is that Nathan attacks with a 1-1 one, one Lunara Elves he pumps it with his Pendlehaven, making it a 2-3, putting a Giant Grove on there, making it a 5-6, then putting a Berserk on there and dealing 10 points of damage with one single Lunar Elves. And maybe you're thinking, yeah, but that never happens. Well, I've got news for you. It does happen. It has happened. It happens all the time, right? This is just a strategy that you can do. The same thing goes for Script Sprites. Maybe you're thinking Script Sprites, a 1 green for a 1-1 one, one flyer. Who cares? Well, actually, flying is a very good is very relevant in old school it's great evasion and combining that with giant growth with berserk with pendlehaven i mean you can have 10 damage from a 1-1 one, one flyer for one green i mean that is value talking about kind of berserk since we're now talking about the second row uh berserk is an important card here and nathan is two in his deck so he needs to know when to use his berserks and on uh, on top of the berserks you see the two cards the avoid fates now what avoid fate does it counters a card that targets one of your permanents, right? So 
if you're putting a Berserk on a creature, the risk is always that your opponent may respond by playing, for example, a Swords to Plowsiers or a Lightning Bolt or whatever, getting rid of your creature, and then he has a two for one. Um, Avoid Fate is kind of this insurance policy for Nathan to make to protect the creatures that he's going to invest in, right? So he's attacking, for example, with his Curd Ape, he's playing a Giant Grove, he's playing a Berserk. Then if I have something to get rid of the creature, I'll probably respond by playing a Swords to Plowsiers, trying to get rid of the Curd Ape, but then Nathan can respond by playing his Avoid Fate, saving his creature and dealing tons of damage and probably win the game, you know? Um, Berserk is really a card that you use to just bring in this final blow, right? And talking about final blows, when we look at that uh, third row, we see four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings, two fireballs, and a disintegrate. That means that only when we look at the lightning bolts and chain lightnings, he already has 24 points of damage in his deck, direct damage that is. So that means that this type of deck, because it has such a strong component of direct damage, it only has to deal so much damage through creatures right so it's not all the pressure on is on the creatures he's got two ways to deal damage and i think that's a great way uh, that's a great thing about the color red is that red is offering you that direct damage option to also kill your opponent so it is a very dangerous deck to play against it's it's a deck that can win very quickly i mean this video the games could be over in five minutes he could just have me on my back beaten in i, I think in five minutes with this brew it's up to me to try to get uh, walls out as, as fast as I can and try to block them. When I'm looking at this list, I think at least he doesn't play Juggernaut and at least he doesn't have any enchantment removal or artifact removal, at least not in his first 60. And yes, I know Chaos Orb can remove an artifact and enchantment. It can remove any permanent, uh, but I'm kind of ignoring the Chaos Orb for now, okay? <laughs> so, because what I want to do is I basically want to drag the game into mid-game, late-game, because this is a deck that wants to win quickly and uh, when the game prolongs most of his cards kind of lose value i'm saying most of his cards because some of his cards will gain value like the x spells the fireball and the disintegrate those spells get better the longer you stay in the game so it's 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 definitely going to be risky um it looks like a good deck i like urn and burnham decks i enjoy seeing this deck thank you nathan for bringing it to the table let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular brew of Urn and Burnham. And now we are going to my deck, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Let's take a look. And here you see the deck that I am playing with today. I'm playing with a deck that I've called Sleeping Beauty. It's green, it's white. I've called it that way because of the Fragerne Enchantresses and it's protected by all these, you know, Wall of Brambles, Carnivorous Plants, and it's in the middle of a forest. I don't know if you know the fairy tale. I don't know if you want to, but you know, check it out and you'll start seeing the similarities between the deck name and the cards you see in this deck and the fairy tale. Anyway, if we look at what I want to do with this deck, because that's kind of what I want to talk to you about here, is my plan is I want to play walls to protect me, right? I've got Wall of Swords, I've got Wall of Brambles, I've got Carnivorous Plant, all those walls, they can protect my life total. In the meanwhile, I'm going to play a Fajuran Enchantress. Fajuran Enchantress is going to be my card draw engine in this deck. As you see, I'm playing with a lot of enchantments. I'm playing with uh, Spirit Links, I'm playing with Animate Walls, I'm playing with Wild Growths, I'm playing with Fortified Areas, I'm playing with Sylvan Libraries. So there are just a lot of enchantments for me to cast. So I'm hoping to get a wall out early in the game, get Fridurn Enchantress out early in the game, draw tons and tons of cards from my Fridurn Enchantress, play Animate Walls over my stronger uh, walls, such as Carnivorous Plant, which is a 4-5, or a Wall of Swords, which is a 3-5 Flyer, I'm going to play my animate walls on them. I'm going to attack with them. Remember, if I have fortified area on the on the board as well, it gives all my walls plus one, plus O, oh, and banding. So it's going to be interesting as well. So all of a sudden, my carnivorous kind of plan would be a 5-5 five, five if I have fortified area there. Then I can play an animate wall on it, making it a 5-5 five, five attacker. So that's going to be very interesting. And then I can just kind of start dealing some damage. But the main idea of winning the game is, you know, first protecting my life total with my walls, then drawing tons of cards with Journey Chantress, and then when I have enough walls on the battlefield, I'm going to play Sword of the Ages. Now, Sword of the Ages, I'm just going to get it here up on the screen because it's not that well known. Sword of the Ages is an artifact from Legends, six to cast, right? So it's expensive and you can't use it straight away because it comes into play tapped. When it untaps, 
you can tap and sacrifice sort of the ages and sacrifice an X amount of creatures and then you deal an X amount of damage equal to the power of all those creatures combined to any target. Now the sword and the creatures are removed afterwards. It's quite important to know that because there was a moment where I tried to combine Sword of the Ages with a resurrection strategy. That doesn't work because all the cards that you pump into the Sword of the Ages, into that sag effect, are removed from the game. Right now, if we now go back to my deck list, what I basically want to do is get a lot of walls on the board like Carnivorous Plant, Wall of Swords, have my fortified area out to pump my walls up, you know, make them stronger and then sack them with my Sword of the Ages and just deal a lot of damage to my opponent. In the meanwhile, because I know this plan takes a lot of time, in the meanwhile what I'm hoping to have done before that is simply play a lot of blockers, gain some life with Spirit Link and just sit back really and, and let the card draw engine of a Journey Enchantress work and, and just get to this point where I will have and a ton of cards and a ton of creatures and um, my uh, Sword of the Ages on the battlefield. Now I'm actually playing with one attacker in this deck and that is Akron Legionnaire. Let's get Akron Legionnaire up here. He's such a cool card. Two white and six to cast, comes from Legends. It's an 8-4 body and uh, if Akron Legionnaire attacks only uh, your artifact creatures can attack. So all your non-artifact creatures cannot attack anymore. That's what Akron Legionnaire does. Doesn't really matter in this case because I'm going to use Akron Legionnaire. I mean, if I can attack with it, of course I'm going to do it. But the main reason he's in there, do you see the art? He's holding a sword, right? So I think that really connects with Sword of the Ages. Uh, so I really want to combine those two cards. You know, Akron Legionnaire equals eight points of damage when I've got my Sword of the Ages on a battlefield. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So this is the deck that I'm playing with today. I think it's going to be very challenging because, you know, we saw the deck of Nathan. It's Urn and Burnham. It's very aggressive. There are lots of ways to kill me. And, you know, I think that after sideboard, I'll have more chances. Why? Because then I can board in my Circle Protection Red. I think before sideboard, Nathan will probably win the game quite easily for the simple fact that I can do nothing against direct damage, right? So if he can just build a huge fireball or just sling a lot of bolts and chain lightnings to my face, I'm just gonna lose. There's really nothing I can do against that. So I think maybe game one, he will probably take game one, but then game two and game three, if I'm lucky with the COP Reds, I, I think I think I stand a chance. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see, right? Uh, without further ado, let's go to the games and let's find out how this is going to end up. Let's go to game one. Game number one, Nathan sitting on the left. He's on the play here, starting Taiga into Lana Rells. Really great start for him, having that tempo already on the board there. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I can find, no, just the planes. I wanted to say maybe I can find a wild growth. Or is it a Savannah? I believe it's a Savannah. Look at this. Two script sprites and a Hammerheim. This is exactly what Nathan wants to do. He wants to ramp. Oh no, I do think... Oh, it's so hard to see if it's a Savannah or, or, or a Plains. Anyway, not really. <laughs> doesn't really matter that much. Look at the pressure that Nathan's putting on the board, finding an Urnum Jin. So that's an Urnum Jin turn three. So one turn early because of that Lanora Elf and also dealing two damage with the script Sprites. And I'm playing an, a Plains and a Balance. Oh, wow, wow, wow. What a great balance for me. Look at what I'm throwing away, though. Like, I can only keep two cards. But this was a well-needed balance. And maybe this balance is the thing that's kind of, you know, that kind of can keep me in the game, you know. Um, we can see that Nathan's probably played out all his creatures early. I'm finding a Fragurian Enchantress. Maybe that other card in my hand is an enchantment so that I can start drawing some cards. So, wow, what a change here. Finding that early balance, taking care of all of those creatures. And then Nathan kind of has to start rebuilding again. And there's that wild growth. So I had an enchantment in hand. Wow, what a draw here into Sylvan, drawing another card. That means next turn, I can look at the top three cards and I can select them any way I want to start drawing some more enchantments. Ooh, Chaos Orb. Is he gonna flip on the Enchantress or on the Sylvan Library? That's the question. It is a hit. I believe he flipped on the Sylvan here. So that is well done. And there is a wall of swords, so some protection for me. And I'm starting now to kind of stabilize the game. And this is where I want to be. I want to kind of drag this game into mid-game, late-game. 
And uh, I'm, that strategy is going quite well here, playing a carnivorous plant here as well to protect me. So it looks like my, my defenses are up now and I can kind of start trying to find, you know, my Sword of the Ages and trying to find maybe an Animate Wall. Now, do remember I had to discard two Animate Walls um, to my own balance. So that wasn't great, of course, but the alternative was losing to a lot of creatures. And it looks like I'm just passing turn here. That is not great drawing a lot of lands, it seems. There is a Kurt Ape 2 3 body. Not anything special at the moment. But I just have to pass. And that kind of gives me a bad feeling because after that balance, I was kind of, you know, in the game. I had a chance to, to get back into it. And now I, all I'm doing is just passing turn here. And I'm giving Nathan the space and opportunity to kind of get back into this game. And that's, of course, one of the weaker sides of, okay, here's a Spirit Link allowing me to draw another card. That's one of the weaker uh, things about this deck, you know, the fact that I'm playing uh, with Wolves. You know, Wolves is not very assertive. I just have to really play very passively. And look at that. He's actually attacking. I'm going to block his Crypt Sprites. Probably going to see a Giant Grove, maybe even a Berserk here taking care of one of my Wolves. Curious to see what he's going to do. Playing a giant growth, killing my carnivorous plant. Oh, there's a berserk there. So that means it's turned into uh, a 5, 6, and 8, 9. Then with berserk, it's going to deal 16 damage. I can take off 5 from the plant. So I'm going to take 11 damage. I'm also going to take some life from the spirit link. So I'll end up on 10, which is actually not too bad. And maybe Nathan thought, if I, if I do not attack with both of these, he is going to double block one of my creatures, which I probably would have done. So I do understand the decision to attack with both of them here. And look, tapping all my lands, there it is. The Akron Legionnaire. And the cool thing is here, he has no blocker. So next turn, maybe I can attack with Akron Legionnaire. That would be so epic. Uh-oh, uh, he's got four, oh, Fireball for four. That is Ah, man, it's uh, oh, so annoying because I just want to attack with Akron Legionnaire, but um, it's not meant to be, I guess, at least not for now. It's it's in the bin. Ooh, and there is an Urnum. Luckily for me, I've got that uh, Wall of Swords to protect me and playing a Spirit Link on the Urnum. And look at that. I've got two Vajurian Enchanters. That means I can draw two cards from one enchantment. There's Fortified Area drawing into two more. So that is pretty great. I think the problem right now with my deck is that um, I've lost my Akron Legionnaire. I've lost a Carnivorous Plant. So it's going to be tough to get enough power to actually kill my opponent with the Sword of the Ages. And another problem is I've lost two Animate Walls already. So basically I need an Animate Wall and I need to be able to deal a lot of damage with it. So besides that, besides you know dealing damage to my opponent, my deck is actually performing pretty good i mean i'm still on 10 life which is pretty good against such an aggressive deck we've we've reached mid game right now so it's looking okay there is another kurt ape there is a lunar else and he's passing turn so he's rebuilding his board again he's also found that uh, sylvan library that's going to help him a lot remember he is uh, still on a lot of life so he can use that sylvan to draw into extra cards to try to find burn and simply burn me to death Remember, he plays with two Fireballs and one Disintegrate. Has only played one Fireball. I haven't seen a single Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning. That means they're all in his deck still. Eight in total, so he's got a lot of damage. Oh, this is interesting. Attacking. Okay, it looks like he's changing his mind. And he's first going to play a Fireball, probably to the Dome. This is a bad sign for me. I'm on five passing turn here. This is a bad sign. If you're on five against a deck with four bolts and four chains, it's not good. It's not where you want to be. And I'm not able to gain any life at the moment. And he's taking an extra card, going to 12. I'm expecting him to kind of kill me via burn, to be honest. Look at that. He's attacking with everything. Maybe he has a Berserk in hand and another Giant Grove. So now I've got to think, remember, the Urnum has a Spirit Link on there. But remember, Spirit Link works is you first take the damage and after that you gain life. So you have to survive the damage that you're taking. So I probably have to block the, uh, the Urnum. And I'm also blocking with my Fajurn Enchantresses at this moment. So one Fajurn Enchantress, it looks like on an Urnum. 
that is pretty dangerous. If he has a berserk, you know, he can trample over me. It's always a little bit difficult looking at these combat situations. Because, of course, you don't know what's blocking what, but... I mean, I am using those Fujur Enchantresses. I do think that's a good decision. So there's one giant growth at least, so I'm going to lose my Wall of Swords, but I'm also going to gain life from my Wall of Swords. And I'm gaining an extra point of life because of that fortified area, and I'm losing uh, my Fujur Enchantresses. Or at least one of them, it seems. So this is actually not too bad. I'm, I'm left with 13 life, and I've only lost a Fujur Enchantress and a Wall of Swords. And there is another Wild Grove and my second Fujurin. So that means I can draw two cards again. And another Wall of Swords. So I think this kind of this attack from, uh, from Nathan, in hindsight, wasn't his best move because he basically gave me some more life. And, you know, remember I was on five life and it's very close to being burned out. And now I'm back on 13 again. That's going to make it quite difficult for him to kill me with an X spell. And there is a Sword of the Ages coming into play tap. Now, in all honesty, I think this is a mistake from my side because um, you want to keep Sword of the Ages. I want to wait for Nathan to maybe be tempted into drawing an extra card with a Sylvan, going perhaps to eight. And then I could have played Sword of the Ages and used my two so uh, Wall of Swords to kill him. Because remember, because of the Fortified Area, they get plus one, plus oh. So I do think this wasn't my best move to play out that sword, because I'm not going to use it now anyway. I think my reasoning behind playing it out was if he attacks with everything again and I have to make a block and he's going to do tricks with giant groves and berserks or bolts and whatever, I can in response always sack my wall to deal some damage. But, ooh, another Urnum. And it's, it's looking really, really risky for me here. There are just so many creatures on the side of Nathan. I mean, luckily I am still on, uh, on, on 13. But, I mean, he's really just expanding his board, and I'm, there has to be an Alpha Strike at a certain point. He's got one, two, three, four. He's got six creatures. I've got four blockers. Playing a Forest and just passing turn. Maybe a Stream of Life would be nice in this deck. And there we go. There is another Lunarware Elves. Even more creatures. He's got the Pendlehaven, right? So he can always pump the 1-1 one, one that kind of gets through the defenses. There's a Wall of Brambles. So some more defense for me and th three more points of damage. Actually, look at this. I think I can kill him now. Oh, no, I can't. No, I've got Wall of Swords is four. Uh, two Wall of Swords is eight points. Wall of Brambles is three. I've got 11 points of damage on the board. I'm missing one point of damage to kill Nathan here. I'm so incredibly close. Oh no, Alpha Strike or not. Okay, two Curd Apes. Is he going to attack with two Curd Apes? Going to attack with Mishra's Factory as well. <laughs> okay, and with Lonerware Elves. I'm a little bit afraid here. I have to block, right? Or do I? I mean, I'm on 13. I could choose to use my Wall of Brambles. It's got regeneration. And maybe block on a Fajorian Enchantress because it doesn't have any power. So this is kind of a tough decision for me. And, oh, I'm going to ban. Of course, my walls have banning because of Fortified Area. In case you don't know what this does, Fortified Area is the enchantment that is lying under my Sword of the Ages. And it gives all my walls plus one plus oh and banding. So they're banding now with my Fajuran Enchantress so that I can put all the damage on my Enchantresses. It looks like I'm letting one creature go through. Not quite sure which one though. Probably one of the Curd Apes because he can just use Pendlehaven on one of the Lunar Elves anyway to pump it up. You know, he's attacking with the one lonely Lunar Elf. Keeping my fingers crossed here, hoping that he doesn't have some kind of weird shenanigans to deal tons of damage out of nowhere. But I think he's already played three giant growths. So, I mean, he's playing four, but the chances are quite slim that he has number four in his hand. He's also already played out one of his berserks, only playing with two. And he's going to play something. Because he's tapping two mana there. The Taiga and that other land. A lot of glare there. Hard to see. Double Lightning Bolt. Is that it? Really? Am I going to... Okay, he's going to bolt. 
Okay, he's going to play it on my creatures, right? He can't kill me out of nowhere. It is kind of difficult with these blocking scenarios. It's not kind of clear what, what blocks are being made. It is kind of clear that my Vigerian Enchantress has banned it with my Wall of Swords here. And then I can divide the damage because of banding. And it looks like I'm blocking one Wall of Swords with, with a Vigerian on a Mishra's Factory and one on uh, a Kurt Ape and then perhaps my Wall of Brambles on a Lanawar Elf. So he's killing one of my Wall of Swords here, which is a good decision because remember, with my Sword of the Ages, he is almost dead, right? Oh yeah, so I'm going to let the Lanawar Elf slip. I'm going to take two damage here and he's going to lose both of his Kurt Apes. Wow. He's really trying to kind of get through my defenses. I do think it's a very good decision. Ooh, animate wall. But can I attack with it? I don't think I can, to be honest. Drawing even more cards here. I mean, if I attack with the animate wall, he's going to go to eight. I'm missing a point still. Oh, this is so frustrating. Remember, my wall of swords is four power. Wall of brambles is three power. If I attack with my four, it's through the air. He can't block it. He's going to go to eight. But I can't sack my walls here. I'm counting the amount of mana. What do I have? Do I have one other wall? Then I can win this. Another Sword of the Ages is not going to help me here. I need another wall. But I've lost quite a lot of walls already in this game. I'm so close to winning this. Untapping. Looking at three because of that uh, Sylvan Library, probably going to choose another enchantment, right? Or a wall. If I can find a wall, I've actually won this one. I need a wall. There's a carnivorous plant. I think I got this one. It's going to go down to eight. And I can sack it. Oh, boom. Wow, 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 wow. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming at all. Winning here this first game. And now I can actually board in my Circle of Protection Dread. You know, maybe I can win this matchup against Nathan. It was very tough for him. I think looking back at the game, it's always easy when you look back at a game. I think the decisive blow was uh, when he decided to, uh, to do that attack. And I had a Spirit Link on that Wall of Swords. And I went from 5 life all the way up to, I believe, 13 or something. And I just gained a lot of life. And that meant that I was out of burn reach. Uh, if he would have just been patient and wait until he had, uh, you know, a second bolt, he could have just burned me out and I, I would, have, would have died there on the spot. But okay, this first uh, game one is going to be 0-1 one, uh, oh uh, for me. And uh, well, now we're going to go to our sideboards and we'll catch back up with, uh, with you in game number two to see who's going to win this one. Game number two and it's 0-1. Uh, oh for me here so that means that my opponent is on a play again and uh, he's got a very quick deck so I mean I just have to hope that um, I can uh, you know keep him at bay just like actually like I did in game one I think in game one uh, I talked a little bit about that combat step you know at the end of the video but another big decider of course in the game was very early where I could deploy that balance balance was so powerful because, you know, um, I think he lost four creatures to one balance. So that was, of course, very important to kind of drag that game into mid-game, late-game. And then I could take it over. Uh, but let's see, game number two. Looks like I've taken a mulligan here. Looking at my hand. Or haven't I taken one? I guess I haven't because I'm not putting a card on the bottom. And there is a Taiga into a Kurt Ape. That's a great start here for my opponent with a nice 2-3. Great start for Nathan. And it's a pretty decent start for me, at least having something to do turn one Wild Grove on my forest. And it looks like my opponent is not playing with any um, land removal, so I don't have to be scared. Usually when I'm playing Wild Grove uh, on a land, I'm hoping for some instant value because there's just so much land removal in the format, there's an attack by Kurtip going go down to 18 here. And maybe I can play a Fragerian Enchantress or Wolf Brambles, perhaps. Wolf Brambles would be nice as well. Unfortunately, I'm just passing turn. That means I'm going to take another 4 damage. Going to drop to 14. We saw this in game 1 where he had a very quick start as well. And I think uh, my life total dropped fairly quickly. 
but I could find that balance, of course, and that is a city of brass that he's played. I'm going to go down to 14 here. And at least he's just passing turn, not playing another threat on the board. There is a Fragern Enchantress. There is a Forest. No white mana for me yet. That could be a problem and also no enchantment. It would have been nice to play Forest into Wild Grove and at least draw an extra card. Hopefully, if I'm lucky, is not able to play another creature. If, 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 no, that's not gonna happen. There is an if, biff, a freed, or sorry, uh, <laughs> it's not an if, biff, it's an urn of gin. Uh, but that's scary too, it's a four, five. I was kind of stuck with the ifs. Anyway, I'm on 10 already, really need a blocker here. Really need something, I'm just passing turn, this is bad. That means I probably have to chum block here with my Fajuran Enchantress. This is awful. This is just a horrible draw from uh, from my side of the board here. And I think Nathan can really get this one. His deck is simply too aggressive for me to do nothing. Have to jump it, uh, jumping it on the Urnum. And then of course, he's probably gonna play his Giant Growth on one of his Curt Apes. Oh, he's got a Berserk. Yeah, he's got a Berserk. Okay, so that means he's gonna deal 16, take away two, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> wow, so this is how quickly uh, a game can go right. This is how quick, how quick it can go, and uh, that's it. Showing him my hand. Look at all those white cards. There was nothing I could do there. Oh, at least I had a COP red. COP red would have been brilliant against those Kurt apes, uh, but no, it just wasn't meant to be. And this is one of the powers of Urn and Burnham. It is a very quick deck, you know, and um, this is what it can do. If you don't have an answer straight away. You're just gonna gonna end up uh, being killed fairly fairly quickly. So wow, this game was over in an absolute flash. Uh, well, at least I won the first one. So that means we're going to game three. Let's go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. One one. At least I'm on the play. And uh, let's hope I can find some white mana for this second game. Let's see how this is going to end up here. And it looks like my opponent, Nathan, here is taking a mulligan. So he's going to go down to six, shuffling his cards again. And I've actually made a few changes um, in the deck, by the way. I've added a regrowth and a soul ring to the deck. And I'm actually trying to find, you know, some other ways to kind of deal damage to my opponent. There is a Plains and passing turn here. There is a Taiga into a Lanarel. So again, a pretty good one drop for my opponent. There's a Savanna and there is a Wild Grove on my Plains. So that means I basically have two Savannas, right? And okay, two creatures and attacking with the Lanarel. So I'm gonna go to 19 Lanarels and a Script Sprites on the board on the side of Nathan. He's doing what he's supposed to do. There's a fortified area. That's not great. I was hoping on a wall of brambles, to be honest. There is, okay, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm showing the card, but there is a Sylvan Library. That's looking really, really strong. Early game here for Nathan. A lot of pressure. Again, he's doing what he wants to do. Gonna drop to 16. Oh, he's gonna pump it with the Giant Grove. Gonna drop to 13 here. And I mean, I really need something. I need something here. Looks like I've got some options. At least I'm doubting. Looking at my hand, a little bit into tank here. And a hurricane for one. Okay, gonna go to 12. He's also taking a hit from the hurricane. He's gonna go to 19. Gonna play a spirit link. And another spirit link. Okay, just dumping tons of spirit links. I think that I've got balance in hand because I'm really dumping my hand here. So I think I've got a balance and I just don't want to lose those cards. Remember, uh, Nathan is pretty low on cards right now. I believe he's only got one card in hand. Or two cards, I guess, playing out an Urnum, which is not too bad for me, if I have that balance. And then it's my turn. I'm playing out that balance. And uh, throwing away my Colossus. That's too bad. Or I'm sorry, my Legionnaire, Akron Legionnaire. And keeping one card in hand. So again, that balance, we saw me use that balance in game one as well. And that actually gave me the win. So hopefully that can happen now as well. A big difference here, though, in this scenario is that my opponent, Nathan, 
has a Sylvan Library and look at this, he's drawing two extra cards, gonna drop to 11. I think that's a very good decision because he's finding some more ammunition. And I'm putting a Spirit Link on his Script Sprites and playing a Wall of Brambles, which is now a 3-3 because of the Fortified Area. So I can block his Kurt Ape here. But that Sylvan is really the problem, right? Oh, look at that, Chain Lightning. And I don't have a green open to regenerate. Probably should have not played that Spirit Link and just played, oh, nice. Wheel of Fortune, that is really nice, Nathan. That is a pretty cool play. I like that. I appreciate that. Um, and that's, it's just fun for the game. I like it when players do that because I think the, the business thing to do was not play it out because you have a Sylvan on the board, right? But I do think it's nice that you did. It's nice for the game. It makes the game more interesting. And I think I made a little mistake with playing that Spirit Link on the Scrub Sprite so quickly and playing the Wall of Brambles. Why not just keep Spirit Link in hand, play Wall of Brambles, keep a green open to regenerate, and then it would have survived the Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolts of Nathan there. So that was a little play mistake on my side. Um, so if we're looking at my hand, I've got six cards in hand now. There's another Urnum. Of course, I can expect to see some pressure here from Nathan. And oh yeah, yeah, he kind of asked if he could take it back and say, yeah, that's fine, because he wants to play a Soul Ring first and then play out his Urnum, having one red open to play, also play out the Kurt Ape. No, no worries. You have to understand these are like kitchen table kind of games. And I think I said that in the introduction as well as that um, Nathan really started, he, he just got back into old school, so he hasn't played in a long time. And playing out a Sylvan here. Tapping a Savannah and playing a Wild Growth. Interesting decision here. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I didn't find uh, for Jern Enchantress. For Jern Enchantress would have been great, you know, playing for Jern first, then Sylvan, then Wild Growth would have given me two cards back. It's not happening. I only have that one Wall of Swords, which is a 4 5 now because of uh, Fortified Area. Okay, Wall of Swords is a gunner because of the Fireball. And oh no, am I dead? I'm not dead. Okay, I'm on. Two. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, <laughs> I was like, "Am I dead? Am I not dead?" I was on two. Then we have the lightning bolt. Another really, really quick game, uh, and I have to say, well done, Nathan. I think you really showed what Urn and Burnham can do, how quickly it can work. And um, like I said uh, at the start of game three, I'm, I'm still tweaking my wall deck. Uh, I think it has some potential. I just need to uh, need to improve it a little bit. Um, I would like to thank you, Nathan for this matchup, it was a great game. I would also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching another episode of Timmy Talks with the channel where we talk old school magic. Um, if you wanna support the channel, you're already doing it by watching Timmy Talks right here on YouTube, but you can also do it uh, by leaving a like, leaving a comment, not using an ad blocker, all those things help. And also, of course, being uh, subscribed to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet all that helps another thing you can do is you can become a patron and you can do that by visiting timmy talks on patreon there's probably a link popping up right now click on that info card click on that link and that will take you to the timmy talks patreon page talking about the patrons let's take a look at our fantastic amazing wunderbar channel members and patrons of timmy talks let's go to the end scroll what shall we do with the Ik het als fikker te samba kazik!